What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome to a new video. Just chilling out right here in what is soon to become my new office. You guys hopefully have seen that video. It's coming along nicely, look, my table thing is built, it's built, but don't worry, there's a video all about that coming soon enough, not just yet. So, today's video, we're talking all about behind the goal remote cameras. You see the pictures from them all the time when you get the shot like, from behind the goal through the net. Um, when it goes well, they come out really, really well. Unfortunately, the downside to those camera remotes is that the hit rate of them is really low, where you quite often um, don't manage to get any decent shots from them. But today, I'm gonna show you all about how we set it up, gonna show you how I do it we're actually going to go to a game later this evening we're going to show you specifically how it looks when it's set up pitch side as well hopefully we get some good shots from it we never know but fingers crossed hit that like button the more likes we get maybe it's going to give me a bit of luck and we might actually get a decent shot from that remote camera anyway that's going to be it for today's video I think it's going to be a great one let's go So I thought we'd get down nice and low here in my hallway to show you this one. So first of all, let's have a look at what we're going to need to set up this remote camera. The first thing is that we will need a mini tripod. Now you don't necessarily have to have an actual like mini tripod. You could have um, a gorilla pod or something like that, which sometimes I have used before. The reason I use this is because it's just a little bit more solid. This is a real cheap one, right? You can get this, um, I think on Amazon I got this from. This is called Cambo Photo. Everything that I show you um, in this video, I will link in the description below. So go check it out if you want to see the stuff. I like this one for two reasons. A, you can set it up really down low if you want to. And B, you can adjust it to make it a little bit taller so you can position it slightly higher if you want to as well. That's one of the main things I like about it. The other thing is it's adjustable and it's got a little ball head at the top so you can angle this to where you want it to be once you've set up the camera and I find that really helpful as well. So that's the first thing we're gonna need. Of course, we're gonna need a camera. I'm gonna be using one of my Canon 7D Mark IIs. So that's the camera that we will be using. We need a lens, something wide angle. And for me, we're gonna use my Canon 10 to 22 mil. I probably will be using this all the way at 10 mil wide open. We're gonna need a cable, a trigger cable, which we will attach to our triggers. So you're gonna need one of those. You'll need a different one depending on the camera you're using, of course. And you're gonna need a trigger that you can fire the camera with. For this, we're gonna be using the Pocket Wizard Plus 3. You don't have to have Pocket Wizards. You could use something else. I've used the Yongnyo um, Triggers Load. You guys know that if you've been watching my videos. Go look at this one if you want a cheap trigger option because they're actually really good. The only downside is you have to fire this one manually. You can't fire this from the top of the hot shoe on another camera. But I quite often do that anyway because sometimes when you're firing it from your camera, you end up with a thousand shots when the ball's nowhere near the goal. So sometimes that's a good option to have anyway. But those are a much cheaper option if you don't want to use the pocket wizards. Right, let's have a look at how we're going to set this up. Okay, so one of the first obvious things you need to do is put your lens on your camera, which I've already done. You're also then gonna to want to attach this to your mini tripod. Now I've got one of these like quick release plates, which makes it really easy to do, but you just screw that on and then you're gonna set it up to the height that you want it to go. Now for me, I tend to actually set it to about this height. That does several things. First of all, it gets the um, the tripod real stable, so that's not going to go anywhere. If it gets hit by a football going at 100 miles an hour, it's going to get knocked over. But that is a risk that could happen anyway. We'll talk about that in just a little bit longer. I also like this because it gets it slightly high up off, up of the ground. Sometimes if it's too low, you get loads of sky in the background. And when it's slightly higher up, it can look a little bit more straightforward rather than up and it just gets a bit more of the pitch action, um, some defenders in the background of the shot, stuff like that. Sometimes it makes it look a little bit better. So you get that on there, whichever height you want it to go. Next thing, of course, you need to do is to attach your trigger. So for me, this goes into the hot shoe on the top, which it will do with most triggers. And then you're gonna have your cable, which will plug into your trigger socket, 
Again, the type of wire you need might vary depending on the camera you've got. And of course, that then plugs into your trigger. Sometimes if you've got a longer cable like me, you might want to wind this round a little bit to make sure it's not like dangling all over the place. And then I've got my other trigger, of course, which I'll be using to actually fire the camera. Now, two things to consider when you set this up, right? What I find really useful is to get it into position and then to put the camera onto live mode, live view. The reason I do that is so I can see on the background exactly the alignment that I've got. Because sometimes when this camera's low to the ground, especially if it's a wet or muddy day, you don't want to be right in down low. I've also used my Canon 70D for a remote before. That's genius because the screen articulates so you can look at it regardless of the angle you've got the camera at. So of course your next thing to do is going to be your composure for the shot and you're going to want to try to get as much of the goal into the picture as you can. Your positioning behind the goal will vary a little bit depending on the type of shot that you want. But overall, um, you just want to try to get, I guess, as much of the goal mouth into the picture as you can. I'll show you a bit more of that later when we're actually at the game. Settings, really important one for this, of course. Now, I tend to go for a slightly bigger depth of field when I'm shooting a remote because you don't know exactly where the action is going to be. So I will set this to about F4. As we've talked about loads with sports, we need a faster shutter speed. So I'll probably be having a shutter speed of around 800th of a second. And then I will go with which, whichever ISO level I need, um, high enough to get the exposure right based on the game I'm shooting on the weather conditions and everything else. Focus. Now what I will do is I will pre-focus on a point. I normally pick a point somewhere a few yards in front of the goal. I pre-focus on that point and then I switch the lens to manual mode. So I know the focus is already set. It's not going to try and refocus during the game or as you take the different shots. The focus is already set to where you want it to be. Then all you've got to do is ping it off and fingers crossed you get some shots. So I think that's about it for the setup right here, guys. Let's head down to the game. I've got to be there in about an hour, so let's head down there. I will see you guys over there at the Fulham training ground. We've got Fulham under 23s against uh, West Brom today. So I'll see you guys over there for the next stage of the video. Let's go. What's up guys and welcome to uh, Fulham training ground for the Fulham under 23s against West Brom under 23s. That is the game that we're covering here today to show you this behind the goal camera. So um, look, no messing around, let's, um, let's get into it and let's show you what we're doing to set up this camera. And I'm set up in the corner. The idea here is I get my view straight down the sideline and of course I can look across and get any gold mouth action at the same time. Right, look, let's go set up this uh, remote camera. Okay guys, so here we can see the actual setup um, all ready to go. I've got the camera, the 7D like we talked about, on the little tripod. Got the lens, I've set it right out to 10mm right now. And I've got my trigger set on top and I've got my other trigger right here. So the important things I'm going to check, A, that there is minimal risk of the ball hitting it. And so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to pull this net out and just double check that it can't reach and hit the camera when a ball hits it, which it can't, so that's good. Second thing, we're just going to check it fires. Yep, perfect, it fires. And lastly, just want to check the actual view. So I can show you guys what I've set up. So there you go, you can see on the back, um, I don't know if it's going to expose too well for you guys, but my view right now, let me show you a similar kind of view using this. My view is like this kind of view here. So I've got the top of the post in, the post in the side, and as much of the goal as I realistically can fit. But that is all set up. I'm gonna have my trigger with me because I'm gonna be sat all the way down here in the corner. You can see my stuff like right down over here. That's where I'm gonna be sat. This is gonna be here. Like I said, it's very hit and miss. I'm just gonna turn off live view. Very hit and miss. Like we said when we were talking about it, I've set to F, 5.6, and I've pre-focused kind of halfway from the end line to the six yard box right here in the penalty area. Fingers crossed we'll get something from it. I hope we do because I want to better show you guys at the end of the video. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to set it all up for the video um, without any actual photos at all. But we'll see how we go. But that's all set up, guys. Fingers crossed we get a decent game. Players over here warming up right now and we'll be good to go. 
the other thing just to touch on with positioning of course is I want to try to get it so there is minimal risk of it getting hit from a ball coming in here now there is always a risk right because I mean still like if a ball was to come from anywhere in this direction from the corner it could hit the camera but what I don't want is the real high powered shots which are likely to be coming in line with the goal kind of here somewhere to be able to hit the camera so we're fairly well protected from the corner about as much as we can be Okay guys, so half time. Um, I, I basically got nothing with that camera in the first half, as is so often the case. Um, I got one image really that I can use, but even then it's not great because it doesn't have the goal scorer, it's got the ball in the back of the net, but I'm still going to use it anyway because it's okay. Going to move it down the other end of the side it, um, because I didn't really get anything attacking in the first half, so I'm hoping I can in the second half. Fulham are 2-1 down right now, so if they get the winner as well, it could be quite a good photo to use. So I'm going to go move it down behind the other goal that Fulham are attacking in the second half. Going to go set it up now. I will see you guys at the end of the game. What's up, guys? So, actually, it's not the end of the game. It's like a good few hours later and I'm back home. Um, it was dark and, and, and so I just didn't film anything at the end of the game there. So, sorry about that, but you get me back here in the office. So honestly bit of a disaster right like in all of the the game I got one photo which um which I've used from that camera um, and that was the one um after uh the, after the goal I haven't really got the goal scorer in it I've got the ball in the back of the net and the goalkeeper kind of looking so it works all right but one photo um I almost thought about binning off this whole video and and trying it again at another game and and seeing if I get some more photos from it but actually that that's a, a really kind of important part of this to realize is that those cameras are so hit and miss that you will often get nothing at all so actually I thought I'd do the video anyway because I think that is an important reality of these um remote cameras is so often you get nothing from them at all um but i'm going to include the photo which you got at the end of the game because hopefully you guys still think it's all right anyway that's about it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please 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 do hit that like button because it helps me out a lot i talked about it in the last video it helps the channel to grow because it helps youtube um to share the video a little bit more that's why i always ask for it in every video because we're trying to grow the channel and that helps me out loads so if you enjoy the channel and you like it please please do hit that like button because it helps me out Think about subscribing if you're new. Loads of other videos still to come on my channel. I'm sure you guys will enjoy them. But in the meantime, I will catch you guys soon. In the next few days, I will see you on the next video.